I want to get started now. Então podemos começar agora. So more than anything else, I wanted you to have the opportunity of actually working out the uh, FE annotation, right? Getting a sense of what you have to think about and what you need to uh, take into consideration um, since the results, if you will, are on the next slide. I am... So there are the results. That's what it should look like. Um, if that's not what you have, then uh, think about what you need to uh, have understood in order to get that. Uh, Fabio is the Avenger, and the grammatical function is external. And the uh, phrase type is noun phrase. The man who broke the window is the offender. That's an object and a noun phrase. And by ignoring him is the punishment, which is a dependent and a uh, PP phrase with the preposition by. I'm going to introduce something uh, new now. Um, also to give you something more challenging to think about. You have a question? Uh, do you plan to approach the relative pronoun now or? No, not no. yet. Okay. <laughs> because some of, of the students got this structure. And maybe they're questioning this, oh my God, I got it wrong. Oh, uh, <laughs> um, I wouldn't say that it's wrong. I would say that that's um, a little more, um, a little more detail than I'm ready to go into right now. Um, on a slightly higher level, I want to address uh, another topic that's relevant to annotation, it's immediately relevant to an annotation, and I think, uh, although it doesn't answer that particular question, um, it does begin to give an idea of uh, how FrameNet uh, handles uh, recording more complicated information. Okay, so media, can I ask a question? Yes, it is about the uh, broke the window, isn't it the injury? And the constituent that did irritated here. Right, the larger constituent is the man who broke the window. The head of that constituent is the man. The man is the offender. So you're asking another version of the same question that uh, Tiago asked. So right now we're just looking at this, the larger constituent. Okay, um, in the next slide, Okay, sometimes FrameNet, okay, so we talked about mostly lexical, lexicographic annotation, and we focused on uh, what we have come to call the primary FE annotation layer. So the largest constituent in which the frame element occurs. In part because we want to uh, implement our understanding of um, core frame elements, the idea being that a core frame element must be instantiated 
or there must be a good reason for it not to be, like null instantiation, and we want to record the type of null instantiation that particular frame element uh, illustrates. We also sometimes do what we call secondary frame element annotation. And in the database, it's, uh, sorry, in the FrameNet desktop, it's possible to see the second layer. Likewise, in the reports on the website, you can see that there's a second layer of annotation. And the relevant uh, frame element here in this sentence is the injury. So as you suggested by asking the question, isn't that the injury? The larger constituent instantiates the offender, because that's the head, right? The man who broke the window. Yes, broke the window is the injury, right? And that is what we annotate on the second layer. Now, we don't bother annotating, uh, we don't do second layer annotation for anything other than uh, core frame elements. They need, we need them for core frame elements because core frame elements have to be instantiated. Right? So, Chago's question um, is a little bit uh, deeper down into what FrameNet does for uh, syntax or phrase type, or eh, syntax phrase type kind of thing. And I'm not going to go into that right now. Um, so now let's look at, so I've just introduced a uh, second frame element annotation layer. Again, I imagine that Brazilian Portuguese has lots of example sentences where um, the larger constituent actually includes two important pieces of information, which in FrameNet would be, uh, each of which would be a core frame element, and we want to record that, we need to record that, and this is how we do it. So let's look at the next sentence. Uh, Mariana sentence, yes. Um, the primary frame element annotation layer is, um, as we indicated, uh, with the man who damaged her car, that's the offender. And much like the previous sentence, with the man who damaged the car also tells us what the injury is. Okay? So right now we're just looking at the frame element manifestation of this, not the syntax. What's important to know is we do second layer FE annotation. We don't provide grammatical function and phrase type, right? In terms of the constituent structure of the sentence, it wouldn't make sense to do that, right? Okay, so... Um, let me remind you that uh, reading, you're reading the rest of the uh, attaching article for tomorrow, and I want to ask you to, uh, again, go to the um, revenge frame on the public website the FrameNet website, pick a lexical unit that interests you or that you like. It can be any lexical unit other than the three we talked about today. 
Now, instead of uh, choosing sentences from FrameNet, I want you to craft your own sentences and make sure that the sentences that you craft uh, instantiate all of the core frame elements. Then think about um, an analogous LU in Portuguese and be prepared to talk about how that works in terms of the frame element, grammatical function, and phrase type. Okay, are there any questions? Complaints? Okay, thank you.